morning. I'm an aloe water. And I got a secret recipe from my homeboy wife. It's a um, pine needle tea. You gotta check it out. It has a lot of health benefits. And this is like a little shot thing. She sells them in the half gallon or whatever. Uh, clearer flavor. So anyway, that's what I'm on. Taking my vitamins. Kind of caught a little cold this morning or yesterday, so. So I'm going to wait on my oatmeal. But uh, we're going to chop it up about uh, the show there. So y'all see who I got on there. What I, what I see, what I got. Hold on one second. y'all see this see this right here that's from my homeboy's wife the number is on there if I can get it focused to get it done anyway I give her a call Charles what it do Keisha what it do T.O. what up with it my king T.O. anyway got my aloe vera water real good for you if you take my vitamins and eat me some oatmeal like I said feeling kind of down today but it's an important day for me, important day for FHO, so I got to get it. Well, Thursday show, what we got? Hey, man, right back at you, Charles, right back at you, uh, Keisha. In L.A., oh, shit, you living the life there, T.O., my partner in L.A. Uh, if you're running anybody, man, tell them you know you sell. Actually, you know what I'm saying? Call, call me, I had to get, to get a name to use. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyway, but do your thing, man. Enjoy L.A. Kid folk, what it do? Holler at your boy. Anyway, take my little vitamins. I don't like to take vitamins. That's always been a fucked up thing for me. All right, but this Thursday show was titled, um, Snitching is Legal in Your MC. And we knew it was a controversial title. We knew it was a little, um, we knew it was a little on the edge. But we're trying to bring you some excitement. And trying to, uh, ah, he got me with that one, the lower Alabama. I got you, T.O. That's a good one. That's a good one. You got me with that one. I forgot how y'all do. Y'all always say L.A. didn't say something. I got you. My bad. So, anyway, um, this Thursday show was titled Snitching is Legal Within the MC. We knew it was a controversial title. We knew it was a little, you know, sketchy, a little iffy. But what we wanted to do um, was draw your attention so that we can teach you a message. Everything we do on Teach MC is methodical. Everything we do on Teach MC, it will teach you something. At the end of the, at the, end of the show, even if we don't cover everything, you should learn something from Teach MC. Um, and I know Ken Falk out there at the airport making it happen. But one thing I want to tell y'all is this. Is that me and John are not the messiahs of the bike set. We have just um, taken on the duty and the obligation to make us better, to give us a chance to be better, shall I say that. One thing I tell everybody is this, is that with Teach MC, we're going to lay the foundation. And the foundation is the tradition, protocol, the respect, and the brotherhood. We're going to lay that down. Now, whatever you build on top of that, if your foundation is set to hold a two-bedroom house and you decide to build a four-bedroom house, it may last, it may not last. And that's in reference to what you build your club on. If you build your club on the foundation, the fundamentals, you don't take no shorts, no shortcuts, no special treatments, no none of that, then nine times out of ten, you can't achieve the brotherhood. Because that's what we're trying to achieve. Hold on, I'm, I'm cooking my oatmeal. That's what we're trying to achieve is the brotherhood. At the end of the day, that's what all of this stuff is about, brotherhood. That's all we're trying to achieve. And everybody keeps, everybody keeps, everybody screams, you know, they want brotherhood, they want brotherhood, they want brotherhood. But then when you go to telling them what's needed for brotherhood, then they get to say, oh, well, you know, well, my club, we don't do that, or my club, we don't do this. And again, that's fine. Me and John are not the Bible. Me and John are not the, um, we not the, the end all, the be all. We're just giving you what we've learned, what we've researched, what we've talked to 
different OMCs about whites and blacks, outlaws, one percenters. And they've given us the history and they've given us their version. It's a lot of stuff that we would love to say that we won't say because, again, people try to take everything that I say. I know for me, everything I say is always twisted. I can get on here and say, hey, man, F your day. And somebody going to twist that to say, hey, I called, the big cell just called you a funky motherfucker. That ain't what I called you. I just said F your day. Um, so just trying to be careful with the thin line on that. Um, lay off the instant oatmeal too much sugar. Yeah, but I'm not adding nothing to it. I got to eat something healthy. I just took all them pills and stuff. My man, hot boy, what up? Alfred, what up? But thank you, though. Uh, who was that? My girl, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Um. Nephew, what up with it? Yeah, hot, hot boy Bobby Williams. He said, run that bread immediately. Yeah, he said immediately. He said, uh, hey, hot boy, I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate you, hot boy, making her get the monikers right when she called. You know what I'm talking about? See, that's what I'm talking about. Real brotherhood and true shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't call no one of my partners talking about this queen who? Yeah, property of uh, Big sale. You better get it right, man. You feel what I'm saying? Let me get this butter real quick. Yeah. Boy, say you Good morning. Some I guess I can see my. I ain't had no damn sleep. He's feeling better. He on his damn microphone early this morning. Too much better. I'm just trying to get that. Bobby said, "Fuck your breakfast." I know he did. I know. Yeah, if I had to say, "Fuck his little funds." <laughs> <laughs> did you get your confirmation? I did. Oh, Thank okay. you. Good morning. Yeah, fuck your funds, Bobby. Will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got information. I'll be there. Uh, she take it. <laughs> She on a trip, babe. She on another trip. What are you going to see? Hey, you know, it's my birthday. Y'all always thought I'd get somewhere on my birthday. Yeah. Always. I'm going to the Mexico. Yeah, okay. <laughs> going to see Dexter St. Jock again, huh? Look, Bobby Williams say cancel. <laughs> what? <laughs> How yeah. you cancel fooling with him? How you going to cancel me fooling with him? Hey, man. No, I tell him we appreciate the love, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I was just saying it yesterday. We appreciate the love, my man B. Will. And he um, got to hook up on the hotel room, too. So hey, I think my man got to hook up on uh, anybody that need, um, anybody that need tickets or whatever, whatnot. Holler my man Hot Boy. He just hooked us up last night. He said, okay, never mind. That boy's stupid. Queen come in looking like Elmo. <laughs> Who is that? Uh -huh. Double D. Uh -huh. Ain't y'all sleep on the West Coast? Where they going? Why y'all not sleep? Say, man, people got shit to do, man. We got to make it's money. It's 3 o'clock on the West Coast. It's 6, 641 here. Come on, Bobby. I'm sleeping here. And, um, double, um, D on double. No, that's not that double D. Oh. That's D on double. That's the Oh, cat. yeah, oh, Red Reed. Yeah, Red Reed. What up, on D? On the West Coast. Yeah, man. But anyway, so... That's what Thursday show was about. I'm gonna get. I want to make sure I stay this. So Thursday show was about. It was at the end of the day. It was about brotherhood. Good night. I'm going to sleep. Well, bye. I'll let you. True brotherhood is. You cannot have true brotherhood by allowing other people to talk about your brothers or to give you half of the story. For example, when you when a brother come to you, your own club brother, because we don't care what the outside people say. We already know that they hate us. Anybody outside of your club that tell you something about one of your club brothers, nine times out of ten, they on some hater shit. Uh, Chief, I'm just doing me some instant oatmeal right now. Um, yes, yeah, Sarita. Uh, we the night crew. Um, um, so, anybody on the outside of your club that's trying to tell you something about one of your club brothers, nine times out of ten, is on some hater shit. For real. Let me let me turn this camera this way. Yeah, nine times out of ten, they on some hater shit. So, what you do is this. When you got a club brother on the inside of your club that's coming to you telling you, I'm going to just use my man Bobby Williams. I don't know. I'm just going to use him. I think I can use him. You know I love him. So, let's just say I go to Bobby Williams, my boy Hot Boy, and I say, check this out, man. I heard the fucked up shit you did with so-and-so. You know, he kind of tell everybody about it. I just want to let you know. You know what I'm saying? That you need to, you know, you need to handle that. So Bobby Williams' first question is, wait, 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 what you talking about? Who told you? And then I respond with, man, look, I don't want to get in the middle of it. I'm just letting you know. 
No, nigga. That's some whole shit. At that point, if I felt so compelled about this story to bring it to Bobby Williams, to bring it to High Boy, I'm supposed to be able to tell him the whole story. Not half of it, not parts of the story, but the whole story, meaning where it originated from, who originated it, well, who originated, where it originated from, and everything that I know about the story, if I feel compelled to tell him the story. Because what I'm trying to tell you is this, in order to have a true and effective brotherhood, we have to start questioning the source, the messenger. What is the messenger's motive for telling you whatever this story was that he told you? What is his motive? Is his motive just to get you mad? Is his motive just to get you angry? Is his motive just to, just to sit back? You know how they got what they say, the slick shit, just to let you know that, you know, you might think you're on a high horse with the club. He trying to let you know that you ain't, you know, on some slick shit. He hating on you that, you know, want to let you know that you ain't this and you ain't that. Whatever the motive is. But if I can't tell you the whole story, all of the facts, everything that I know as your brother, then I'm a fucked up individual. And I'm a messed up club brother. I'm trying to see. Gerald Franklin. Yeah, I'm a little sick. Yes, indeed. What up, Miss Patricia? I see you, baby. Garland, what up with it? So we have to start, we have to start holding people accountable for, for um, what's being spread around the club. And that's why we came up with the term snitching is legal, because you have to start snitching on niggas. And we're going to say telling, but if you look up the definition of snitching, it's, snitching is not what we made it to be. Um, you know, we, as blacks, we coined it, you know, snitch is one of the most fucked up things you can have. But anyway... You have to start telling everybody. So, for example, when 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 so, one of your club brothers, because like I told you, we don't care about what's the outside. If a person from the outside brings you some shit, like I say, you really ought to just smash him from the beginning. But if I hear anything about Hot Boy, I don't give a fuck what it is. If a motherfucker felt compelled enough to bring it to me about Hot Boy, I should feel compelled to take it immediately to Hot Boy with all of the facts, not half of the facts. Not some of the facts, not that I don't want to get involved shit, because I'm already involved because Hot Boy is my brother. Yeah, and whatever you say about my brother, come on, man, I'm, you're interrupting my show, man. You got one last time, I promise you, you boy, you, oh. you're going to set your neck in this, I'm trying to tell you. I'm oh, trying. man. Yeah, keep on interrupting my shit, you're going to set your neck right on up in here, I told you. Yeah. Anyway, um, you owe it, you, you're already obligated. There's no such thing as being in the club. Wearing the same vest and talking about, well, I don't want to get in the middle of it. You're already in the middle of it. Nigga, plus, oh, and, and plus, I'm sorry. Um, I don't mean to curse. Bernie Mac, what up? What if if it, if it is a true brotherhood, the yeah. source should have yeah. said something just as well as you did. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. The source, nine times out of ten, is the rotten core in the MC. The source is the weakest leak on the chain. Nine times out of ten. Because understand this. There's two things that can happen when I go to Bobby Williams and say, hey, man, hey, hot boy, I heard this. He should say, I already know so-and-so brought it to me. I'm going to address the situation. Boom. Then I mean that old boy that said it was a true dude because that's my number one thing. How are you talking to me first about a problem or a situation that happened with somebody else? Have you talked to that person first? You feel what I'm saying? That's the point. That's the problem that we have. Miguel, this morning has been a long time since I've been doing it. Thank you. it. Then you involved yourself. So that's what I'm saying. My nephew, uh, Sarita, Sarita said I posted that a couple of days ago. Accountability, get you some. I'm telling you, loyalty. At the end of the day, you owe it to the MC, not to the individual. You owe it to the MC to weed out the bullshitters, to weed out the messy motherfuckers. And even if it's, what I'm saying is this. Now, if you hear something on a fly, you just, you know, you're in a clubhouse or you somewhere and you hear something about somebody's business, then you keep that to yourself. You, you feel what I'm saying? You don't have to tattletale everything. You keep that to yourself. But if Big Sale bring you something, you feel what I'm saying, about somebody else's business, then you owe it to expose Big Sale and the business so that we can get it talked about, get it done, get it resolved, and get it moved out the way. You feel what I'm saying? But more importantly, we're going to expose Big Cell for the sneaky, uh, for the being a sneaky snake individual. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Only then can you achieve true, true brotherhood. If everybody in your club knew that no matter what you said, it was going to get back to the club, no matter what, and you was going to be exposed, I promise you, 
motherfuckers will stop. Motherfuckers will stop. Uh, will stop telling shit. Will stop being messy. If everybody in your club was a snitch to the club, if they was a snitch to the club, and, we, and, I, and again, I'm just saying that word snitch. Don't. It's just the word. If everybody was, it was everybody was loyal. Snitch meaning loyal to the club. That everything that was said behind the club's back would go directly to the club, not to, not to the to the streets or not to the wife. We ain't talking about pillow talking. We ain't talking about none of that. We're talking about to the club. Then all of that bullshit would stop. All of the the so and sos or the ooh, did you hear this? Is an ooh that shit would stop, and you can achieve true brotherhood. I'm telling you, only then. So to so understand what I'm saying, the message Thursday. The bottom line message was Thursday says, there is no such thing as it ain't your business. It is your business. It's 1,000% your business. If you bring me some information about my club brother, I am to turn around immediately, not the next day, not then, but I am to immediately turn around and give it to my club brother, period, and tell him where I got it from, period. Because understand this, just like you told me whispering or on some slick shit, you're going to have to repeat that same shit. And then if you don't, that's where the problem come in between me and you. You feel what I'm saying? That's where the bullshit come in between me and you because now I'm going to expose you. And now me and you got an issue in the situation because now you lie. So I'm going to expose you as the liar that you are. Again, if I'm in the clubhouse or I'm somewhere and I just hear some shit, you know, you walking by, you... Overhear a conversation or whatever. That's that's totally different. You keep that to yourself. If you got a, if a brother told you something about, if a brother told you about something about him in secret, you keep that to yourself. But if another brother inside of your organization brings you any information, any ill, fucked up, uh, chaotic, you know, personal business, manure, what to do? If any brother brings you that. You owe it immediately to, to snitch on his ass to the club, especially to that other brother. Uh, my man Manure Ali, what up with it? And my man, uh, okay, invoke enthusiasm. Good morning. The wisdom comes from governing yourself and not being in business of anyone else. Karma is truth. The law of it settles all action, reaction. Again, I totally agree. For every action, there's a reaction. But a lot of us have heard this. And maybe some of us have been guilty of it, trying to diffuse the situation without really, um, without really wanting to be. Innocent. Good morning, Tracy. You just logged on. We're doing a post for Thursday show. Um, a lot of you guys want to, you know. For example, you call it one. I'm, I'm a, it ain't my business, but I'm gonna let them know. You know what I'm saying? It came to me, but I don't want to be in the middle of this shit because this shit can be ugly. You know, this shit can cause fights. This shit can cause wars. But understand this, if that is your club, brother, you are already in the middle of it. You don't have no choice. Because I'm responsible for you, you're responsible for me. And we're talking about building a brotherhood. We're talking about bonding the MC. We're talking about having a 1,000% solid MC. Again, and that's all that me and John do on Teach MC. We're, we're not, we're not, um, you, you laugh out loud, you forget to eat. Uh, oh, I ain't worried about that. I eat. What up, sis? I love you. Mm -hmm. Both y'all sick. That's my sister, man. I love her to death. What's that? Um, what that mean? That's hot. Blue's blue, brown or blue? I got gray. I got some gray blue. Yeah, the gray. I said it right. Depending on what color pants you wear. Anyway. They black. Yard, what up with it? So, um, what I'm saying is this. It's not you, HD. Everybody said that's not. You owe it to your to your club to snitch on all of the messy, the the half truths, the half storytellers. And I'm telling you, that will again, that will bridge the gap and, and the bond on brotherhood. Because again, if I'm in a club where I have where there's no secrets that are allowed to be kept told or whatever amongst the club. Now again, you you know, if you got a club brother that you tell a secret to, that's one thing. If you walk through the clubhouse and you hear something else, you mind your business. It's not your business. But when it's brought to you, and when it's when it's brought to you, that's totally one thousand percent your business. And you owe it to the club to expose the business and to expose the individual first and or the business. When I say you owe it to the club, but to the club brother. If it's something pertaining to the club, for example, 
if you get accused of stealing money, I'm sitting up behind my business. Hey, Tracy, I'm going to use Tracy as an example. She can Tracy come over to me, which Tracy wouldn't do this. She ain't that kind of person. But you have to be this kind of person, Tracy. Tracy come to me and say, hey, Sal, I just want to tell you, so-and-so just told me that they that they said you was, you stole money from the treasure. I'm, I was the treasurer or whatever. From the treasure. You stole money from the club. Okay. She can't say so-and-so, and she can't say they. When she decided to bring it to me, the story has to go like this. Hey, Sal, um, Sister... Sister Day just told me that the board has accused you of stealing money. That's how the story should go. If you felt compelled enough to tell me the story, to bring it to me, you owe me the right to tell me the entire story, not bits and pieces, not some, because you are at that point, you are the messy person. You are the non-committed brother. You are the half-ass sister or brother to that club. Because again, you felt compelled to bring it to me. What was your purpose to bring it to me? Was your purpose really for me to get down to the bottom of it? Or was your purpose to sit back and just laugh and say, I wonder what he going to do, how he going to get out of this? Yeah, he thinking he all of that. He thinking he all of this. But now look, they done caught his ass up now. Because that's what people do. A lot of people are so scary in life that they don't want to fight. They love to see a fight. You ever, you ever notice, hey, my man Juice is on here. You ever notice that you got people who will instigate a fight but would never fight? That's the same shit. You got people that love to see fights, but won't never fight. Oh, they'll call you all of the bullshit. Oh, that nigga just said this. Oh, excuse me, I'm trying. I got to remember I'm on radio. I'm not today, but I still got to have the same mindset. Oh, that that nigga, that boy, <laughs> that person called and said this. That person called and said that. And I'm telling you, when they hang up the phone, they call us somebody else like, hey, I just told Sam, uh, so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so. So -and -so. Let's see how this is going to play out. Because that's all they want. They're living off of your downfall. They're living off of your mistakes. They want to see the blow up. They want to see the flare. But here it is. I go to flaring up, and I don't even have the whole story. I don't even have, I don't even know who I'm flaring up on. You feel what I'm saying? I don't even know, I don't even have enough information to, to be intelligent about the situation. Shit started, like, uh, like uh, Sarita said. Shit started. So you owe it to your MC. You owe it to your MC. To, to squash, to, to expose, to snitch on the shit starters. My man Bernie Mac say, but it's not about snitching. But when you hear it, you should. Stop that and that very minute. But if you know your brothers, you know the ones that keep up shit and drama. So it's not snitching. It, and that's what I'm saying. We use the word snitching. Look up the definition for snitching. It's called keeping it 100 or real. Yeah, that's today's term. That's today's term. Keeping it 100 or real. But look up the definition of snitching and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and again, we have we have taken the word snitching and, and made it something, you know, big different than what the definition. But however you want to say it, keeping it real and keeping it 100 or whatever. And when you just say, don't make it right. When you just say, but um, star, you know the ones. Well, it shouldn't be the ones in your MC because that is what's going to keep causing confusion and chaos in your, in your MC. Once you find out who they are, Full patch brother, prospect or whatever. You need to expose their ass and get rid of them. And some people, you got to understand this. Some people don't even realize what they're doing. They don't even think it's a problem. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of cats don't even realize it's a problem when they do that. I'm telling you, trying to help people out. I used to call a person and try to give them the heads of, hey, I'm just letting you know they finna call you. What's going on, Sal? Just be prepared. They finna call you. Boom, and I'll hang up. I have to stop doing that because that is a bad brother. That is a fucked up brother. And I used to be that. So like I said, one of the things John said is that everything that we're teaching you now is what we were guilty of. And we corrected that in order to be a part and effective in our own MCs. Okay. You have to go through stuff to learn to change that because it wasn't fair. Now, once I hung up the phone, I automatically gave that brother a fucked up mindset for the next call to come in. He could have been able to handle it differently. He could have been able to, 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 to talk about it differently or to have a different mindset, to have a better resolution or solution or, or, or even a better answer. But I done already fucked his mind up with the bullshit. So really, what was my motive? When I called him, what was my motive? To call him and tell him to give him that so-called heads up. But I gave him only half the story, half of the truth. 
Come on, man. We got to stop that. Trust me. We have to stop that. You owe it to your club, brother, if you hear anything about them or the club to expose the person that brought it and to expose the message to the brother. And if it's about a club, if it's about club business, then you expose it to the club. It's just that simple. If you do that, you will weed out all of the shit starters, as Cheek said. You will weed out all of the bullshitters, and you will weed out all of the drama, all of the unnecessary bullshit. I promise you. I fucking promise you. Um, Y'all need to share this video. Hit the share button, everybody. When you can identify an issue with you, with you, within you, then that is when you can change it. That's an awesome example of what accountability is. Cheat, sir. Hey, Cheeks, I'm just giving you, listen. I, one thing I won't do is sit up here and act like I'm holier than everybody else. Or that I'm a perfect dude. Man, I've had my ups and downs. I've had my lumps and bumps. And and I'm trying to tell you. One thing I tell everybody is, especially in this Harley Davidson game. I spent a million dollars the wrong way fucking with Harley. I can now show you how to take $10 and make the best investment in Harley Davidson that you can make. Harley Davidson is my brand of motorcycle. Um, that That's all that I deal with. So I can tell you how to take $10 and spend it on your Harley Davidson as opposed to taking a thousand dollars and throwing it away on your Harley Davidson. And it's the same thing when it comes to this motorcycle club. To the MC set. I've traveled all over the world. I've been in the presence of of heavy hitters, medium hitters, lightweight hitters, to no hitters. I've been in their presence. I've talked to OGs after OGs. I've um I've I've in, in my club I've um added chapters. I went and sat in meetings to to bring other chapters to other cities and states and, and everything. I've made the connections. So when I tell you something, hey, Sis Ramona, when I tell you something, I'm, I'm only telling you this from my heart, okay? One of the questions that asked to me also was, so who are you to have to bring this information? Why do you feel like you are the one to have to bring this information? And my, my question was simply, to the, my answer to them was, well, I've been waiting on you to do it and you haven't done it, okay? Don't ask me why God chose me or don't ask me why I felt compelled to make the set better or to get the brotherhood um, to, to what it needs to be amongst uh, amongst the motorcycle set. Don't ask me why. It's just something that's in my heart. It's something that I love to do. And I was raised that way. My mom and dad always raised me not to be selfish. When you know something, you share it. Have I lost on a lot of times by sharing information early or giving somebody something? Yes, I have. Have people turned around and blessed me sometimes? No, they didn't. They took my, they took blessing and ran with it and never looked back. But I don't worry about that. I worry about him up there, God. God is going to give me my blessings. No matter how much people hate on FHO, no matter how much people want to try to say, hey, they helped me start this, or because of them, FHO is here, or, or whatever. Whatever means that he used to get FHO to the next level and to the levels that we're going to, thank you, Jesus. It's just that simple for me. Thank you, Jesus. And for all of you guys that support FHO, that watch FHO, that mess with Big Sale, that know Big Sale, thank you in advance for your love, your cares, and, and, your, and everything. In advance, I'm saying thank you. So, this was the Be the Vessel, baby. It's a passion when it's a passion. Or shall I say, your call and get joy out of it. Thank you, uh, Cheeks. So, at the end of the day, Thursday's lesson was snitching is allowed in your MC. It basically was to say this, is that you are not anybody, but your club brother or your club sister tell you anything about your club brother or your club sister without you exposing that individual and the information. You're not allowed to do that. You have no choice but to be in the middle of it. Once it's brought to you, guess what? Tag, you're it. Remember the old game tag? Well, a lot of y'all Probably most of y'all didn't grow up and played outside. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all didn't get to play outside. But it was a game back in the old days. I'm going to just say this. Back in the old days, back in the old days, it was a game called Tag. This is before the PlayStations, before the Nintendos, before the Ataris. We used to go outside and play a game called Tag. And it was a simple game. Everybody hid, and one person was chosen to, to go find those individuals. And if you got caught, he tapped you and said, tag you in. Now it's your chance. Everybody get to go hide. And you got to find somebody. Sometimes you was the person that had to find somebody all day. If you was a sorry, if you was a sorry person. Um, 
But sometimes, you, if you was good, you can go right to a, right to a person, tag him, and that was it. But that's what we used to do back. I know, I know, y'all probably like, damn, y'all used to go outside and play. Who does that? Yeah, we used to have to go outside and play for hours, for hours. Yeah, that's old school shit, y'all. Most of you little young punks don't know nothing about that. You feel what I'm saying? That's old school shit. Tag, yeah. But anyway, I'm on here long enough this morning. As y'all can see, I'm trying to get over it. Um. I love y'all. Truly, I do. Um, FHO is a movement. It's not a club. When you look at the vest, it has it don't have MCR, CSC on there. It has nothing to do with a motorcycle club at all. It is a racing group. It's just a group that I'm starting for all of the people who are independent, for all the people who are independent but connected to the motorcycle set. Also, let me say this. The FHO is not all about racing. Okay, when I first designed FHO, it was about a better lifestyle. When I say run your motor, not your mouth, everything I do is going to be related to the motorcycle community. It's going to be related to the motorcycle culture. But when I say run your motor, not your mouth, running your motor is your mind and not your mouth. Quit talking about being a better person. Quit talking about being a better brotherhood. Quit talking about, I wish my motorcycle club would be better or do better. Quit talking about it and get your mind right to, to, to do the thing that it's going to take. If you promise to make you a better member, if you work on you and work on and then start sharing it amongst the brothers that surround you, then um, then you have no choice but to infect the motorcycle club that you're in with goodness and brotherhood. And it's going to be a fight. Trust me, it's going to be a fight. So now after bro A tells bro B, he tells bro C what A has said. Won't status of bro A change to you didn't mention. If bro B, okay, if bro A told bro B something about bro C, and bro B told uh, came to bro C and told him half of the story about what, what bro A said, then bro B is a fucked up individual. But if bro A told bro B something about bro C, but has bro A hasn't talked to bro C yet then bro A is a fucked up individual. But if bro A tell bro C something about bro B, and bro A hasn't taken it to bro C, but bro B takes it to bro C, you feel what I'm saying? Then A and B is a fucked up, is a fucked up situation, and bro C need to take it to both of them immediately. Yeah, you didn't think I could figure that out, huh? Yeah, we, we play that and get it. It's up in there. <laughs> so when you have, so when you have, when you're in a club or organization of more than two people, there is always BS. This is me when a brother comes to me about anything. If it's club business, let the let them know because it's... I'm trying to see everything you said, Bernie. Because it's... And yeah, brothers come to me about anything. If it's club business, I let them know because it's about the club. I am obliged to tell all when, who, and why. If it's personal, it's between us. Again... You you have no choice, Bernie, but to expose the individual and expose the the whole nine yard. What about badass sound system? <laughs> My man Manu Ali, the champ, man. The champ, the champ, the champ. What up with it, man? One of the loudest sound systems I've heard ever in my life. And I'm almost willing to say one of the loudest and baddest sound systems in the world. My man Manu Ali out of Philly. I'm telling y'all right now, if you're building a bike and you're putting sounds on it and the tag don't say Philly, don't cut it around. If you see a Philly license plate on a motorcycle, don't turn your music on around. Nobody got a Philly license plate. The boys are doing something totally different. Um, so, so anyway, that's FHO is anybody can be a part of FHO. It's not a brand specific movement, but it's a movement of life. Run your motor, not your mouth. Simply mean get off your ass and go do it. Quit watching from the sideline. Uh, and talking shit about things that are not happening. Get your ass up and go make it better. Hey, Carla. My girl Carla Wade just checked in. So that's what run your motor means. Run your motor means your mind. Run your motor means your feet. Get up. Make moves. Do what you got to do in life. If you want a better job, run your motor. Put yourself together to be, to go after that better job. Instead of sitting back, running your mouth, talking about what you want, talking about what you want to do, talking about how you want to see things better. Go do it. Make it better. How does this change? How does the champ compare to the president of Sin City? Listen, my man Teddy from Sin City, shit knock. Listen, I'm telling Teddy, 
Teddy should not. I just told you. I'm not going to say this no more. If you got music on your bike and you see a cat from Philadelphia on their license, if it's a Philadelphia on their license plates, do not turn your shit on around them. That's all I'm going to tell you. Because I promise you, you're going to be uh, mad as fuck. Yard dog, you for sure can get one. Go get some tea. I, I Trust me, I've been doing that all day. Big Cell, what to do, big homie? C-Mac, what up, C-Mac? Uh, Bernie Mac, now tell me what I need to do with this 10 <laughs> That's the subject. Call me and let me know what you got and what you don't got. Um, uh, call me and let me know, uh, Bernie, and we can talk about whatever you got or whatever you don't got. We need shirts up here in Philly. I'm working on it, man. My shirts sell out so fast. And understand that I'm just me. And my uh, CFO, which is my wife, we take our, we save up, you know, for two or three months, man, to put our money to get these shirts. And uh, as you know, we spend, we get the best quality shirts and we get the best quality printing. So our shirts are not $10 shirts. It don't cost us, it costs us 20, anywhere from 18 to $25 to make a shirt. So when you're talking about 100 shirts, you're talking about twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars that we got to spend up front to make the shirts. But we do it. We, we, we make the sacrifices. And especially if I can keep Queen out the mall on any level, the mall, Amazon, the shopping catalogs. My goodness, that girl really has an addiction. Y'all really need to talk to Queen. She has a true shopping addiction. Anyway, but um, I'm, I'll try to get some shirts made. Um, but other than that, man, Teach MC Radio on 106LiveRadio.com every Thursday from 9.30 p.m. to 11 Eastern Standard Time. And I'll be doing another post show probably for the radio station, something like this, but it'll be at the radio station. Um, but that's what it's about, man, brotherhood. Um, you owe it to your brother. You don't have the obligation to not be involved. You don't have the obligation to not, to, to, to not be in the middle of it. Once it's told to you, you're 1,000% involved. And you're one thousand percent percent responsible for the information. Period. Make the right choice. Get it exposed. That is the only way you're gonna weed out all of the bullshitters in your club, on your brotherhood. You wouldn't you cannot have a brotherhood with half told stories and secrets and, and back talk. You cannot have a true brotherhood, I promise you. I promise you you can get close, but you will not have a true brotherhood with half stories, untold stories, bits and pieces of a story. Um, and, and, and half ass secrets amongst brothers. Okay. Again, if you tell me something in secret, that's me and you. But if somebody else tell me something about you in secret, that is, there is no such thing. You cannot tell me anything about Cheeks and call it a secret. You can't call me and say, hey, hey, hey. You know, Cheeks is dating so and so and so and so. And you know he married. And I'm just using this as an example, Cheeks. I love you. Thank you for supporting me and thank you for commenting. I am immediately supposed to call Cheeks. Oh, hold on. Hey, Cheeks. So, 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 so my phone to me about your business and the fact that this nigga married the whole nine yards. And this is who said it, and this is the whole nine yards. True story. Blessings, big sale. Happy holidays to you and your family. I'm up early cooking the Boston, but hey, man. Nine, but well, I need to get one of them. One of them need to be coming this way, man. Uh, thank you, Cheeks. But anyway, that's just an example. I use Cheeks as an example. Please don't go saying, say, oh, say, because listen. That's another thing y'all got to do. Stop taking everything I say and twisting it. Hear me for what I say. If you don't understand what I'm saying, inbox me, call me, text me, do something. But quit taking everything that sales say and making it a mountain. Oh, my goodness. You guys have no idea how much I get tired of that. But anyway, that's it for me. Time to eat my oatmeal. It should be nice and warm. I love y'all. Truly, I do. Teach MC Radio. Brotherhood Protocol, Make the Tradition Matters on 106 Live Radio. Download the app. Tell all your friends to download the app. Um, this Thursday, 9, 30 to 11 p.m. Well, um, it's going down. And shout out to everybody who supported me. Chris Exclusive Sound, Tiffany Barker Life Magazine. Uh, my man C-Dog doing his thing at Marlene's on Tuesdays. Uh, Marlene's on Fridays, I believe. And then he got the uh, he got the Christmas party. I mean, uh, the uh, New Year's Eve party at Sudo. So shout out to that. But... I love y'all, truly I do. Who am I to bring the message? Just me. Who appointed me to bring the message? Just the God that sent me. That's it, that's all. Love y'all. Talk to y'all. So enjoy your Saturday, man. Don't forget, love, love, love yourself. Then love somebody else. And put some respect on the throttle. It's your boy Big Cell, FHO, and I see. And I'm gone.